Alrighty, cherubs. So today we're going to talk about the rest of classical Greece and finish this up. So our theme is continuing to be idealism. They're going to continue to talk about the ideal and what that means and what that looks like for them. And this time, we're last time we talked about idealism as far as sculpture goes, and today we're going to talk about idealism as far as architecture goes. We're talking the Acropolis today. The Acropolis is the sacred site of Athens, Acro High, Opolis City. So it's literally the high city that we're taking a, a look at today. So this is one of those instances where AP gets tricky on you. So this is piece number 35, but within piece 35, they have... Um, five more pieces <laughs> to, to learn about. So we've got the Acropolis, that's piece 35. But then within the Acropolis, we have the Parthenon. We've got some statues from the pediment of the Parthenon. We've got another temple, the Temple of Athena Nike. We've got a statue from the Temple of Athena Nike. And then we've got a frieze from inside the Parthenon. Okay, so we've got, here's the Parthenon here, here's Athena Nike, and so that's where we're going. We've also got some fun architectural terms to talk about today, so gear up, we've got a, we've got a lot ahead of us. Um, now I wanted you to watch this, and I'll post this down below, but what it comes down to is that ancient Greece is, or excuse me, the classical Greece, classical Athens, is a result of the Persian Wars. That happens because um, they defeat the Persians. But it was a series of alliances and some later backstabbing that brought us to this moment. So what I want you to do is watch this so you can get some historical context about what... Um, is going on and how we got here. And then we're going to watch it, continue watching the rest of the video at the end to find out how classical Greece comes to an end. What happens and how they fight themselves into being conquered. <laughs> All right. So here is the Acropolis again with these pieces. Now you'll notice that the Acropolis is the axis mundi for Athens, okay? We've got Athena Nike and Nike adjusting her sandal, being part of the temple of Athena Nike, which is right there on the Acropolis. Um, we're getting the plaque of the Ergastines is what this is called. And the plaque of the Ergastines is a frieze from inside the Parthenon. We're also getting the pediment statues from the front, the facade of the, the Parthenon. And the Parthenon is located right here on the Acropolis. Now there's other temples and other structures on the Acropolis. Here's the Erechtheion. Here's the Propylia. And we've got, like I said, other, other things happening. Okay, so the Erechtheion was a temple dedicated to the victory of um, Athena over Poseidon for the um, patronage of the city. And here we've got the old temple of Athena. So what happened was the city of Athens was burned by the Persians. Um, it was destroyed by the Persians and they set up a defense coalition with other city states after the Persian Wars to just in case the, the Persians decided to come back as a defensive measure. And so they started to collect tributes and, and money from these other city-states is you paid your dues to be part of this. It's called the Delian League, to be part of this alliance. Um, but then what happened was Athens started to, 
take the money for themselves instead of building up um, ships and armies and things to help um, defend Greece against the Persians, they started to rebuild Athens. And that's where classical Greece, that's how it happens. And so you're getting um, this amazing flowering of beautiful, shockingly beautiful, like the golden age of classical Greece, paid for by uh, oppressing the other Greek city-states. And eventually they're going to have enough of those shenanigans and say, no, we're not doing this anymore. And they're going to go to war with Athens. But in the meantime, that's how we get this. They rebuild the, the Acropolis. They rebuild Athens as a city of marble. Um, so here's, again, the temple of Athena Nike. Nike is like the shoe, means victory. So um, it's the she's the goddess of victory, all right? Um, the Parthenon is dedicated to Athena Parthenos, the virgin. Parthenos means the virgin. So it's dedicated to Athena Parthenos, <clears throat> and it had a giant statue, a giant Chris elephant Chris Elephantine statue inside um, that was two stories tall of uh, Athena. So that means that she was made out of ivory and gold and she was gorgeous. Okay. The Propylia is the gate temple that you have to pass through on your way up into the Acropolis. All right. So the Acropolis is built at the high point of the city. It's built on this this uh, plateau, this mesa, that this outcropping of rock um, within the city. So it's literally the highest point in the city, and its function is the axis mundi. It it functions as that as the sacred sites for um, the the Athenians. Okay. There's the Propylia, which again is that, that temple gate. There's the Parthenon, which is dedicated to Athena Parthenos. There's the Erechtheon, which is housing the relics of the war between Poseidon and Athena to determine who is going to become the patron of the city. And the temple of Athena Nike. Okay. So again, built after the sack of Athens by the Persians, um, by the Athenian general Pericles, who is the leader of, of Athens during this time period. And it's going to be paid for by the Delian League. The construction of the Acropolis is what's going to lead, and the, the use of that money, and amongst other shenanigans, is going to lead to the Peloponnesian War and the downfall of classical Greece. So Greece, Athens goes to war with Sparta, they fight amongst themselves. They decimate each other. Sparta wins, but is too weakened to hold all the territory they take from the Athenians. And Philip of Macedon, Alexander the Great's father, comes in and gobbles up all of Greece. Um, <clears throat> we're going to just watch this little clip. We're coming up the steps, up into the Propylia. There's the Erechtheon. There's the Parthenon. There's Athena Parthenos. The Porch of the Maidens. So good. Okay, and here's another reconstruction showing us what the Acropolis would have looked like. And what it looks like today. So there's the Parthenon. 
statue, a different statue of Athena. Propylia, Athena Nike, Erech Theon. So that's what it looks like today. Um, the Parthenon is later going to be converted into a Christian church after Greece converts to Christianity. Um, and then in the 1400s, after the Ottoman Turks come in, it's going to be converted into a mosque. Later, it's going to be housing munitions. Uh, gunpowder and such, and a bomb is going to land inside and blow up, which is why it looks like this today, because it literally got blasted apart. And that's what it would have looked like in the day. All right. Uh, I'll link this down below. It's a tour. You can just tour it and spin around. You can actually move the camera around here in this YouTube video, which is kind of cool. So that's the Acropolis. All right. Now, in the videos here, I've mentioned these before. Um, we didn't get to it in class. so I'm just going to go through this again. The order, different columns and different decorations for temples and buildings um, are going to be dictated by, they're called orders. Okay. So our different orders are Doric, which is meant to be masculine, Ionic, which is meant to be more feminine, and Corinthian, which are very ornate, and they are meant to be for sacred spaces. So you're not going to see classical on the out, or excuse me, Corinthian on the outside of buildings. You're only going to see it on the inside, inside sacred spaces. Ionic columns have the volutes, the scrolls, and Doric columns are the most simple. Now, again, I think I've mentioned this in the videos that they have the fluting. The fluting are the little ridges. And they've got the fluting because they were looking back to the Egyptians and the Egyptians were making their columns to look like bundles of plant stems. And the Greeks not understanding that, just like the look said, oh, okay, we're gonna, that's how you make a column. And so they added it to theirs. And then the Romans did it because the Greeks did it and we do it because the Romans did it, so. The Doric temple, the Doric order again, is the most simple. It's just got the, the column with the capital, very simple capital. It's got this, it's called the architrave right here. And then it has triglyphs and metopes just below the pediment. Okay. The triglyphs and the metopes, the triglyphs are these three lines, tri, three, Metopes are the, is this space here, and in this space on the Parthenon would have been filled sculptures, okay? And those are now housed in the British Museum, these sculptures that were these Metopes sculptures, as well as the pediment statues, okay? So that's how you can tell if it's a Doric temple. Is It's got very simple capitals, and it has triglyphs, these three lines, as well as the Metopes, which are these um, either blank or filled with statues. An Ionic temple is going to have scrolls. The capitals on the columns will have scrolls. And rather than triglyphs or metopes, what it's going to have is a giant frieze, just one solid running sculpture, bas-relief sculpture. Okay. And the Corinthian are going to be just very, very ornate. So if we take a look at the Parthenon, a reconstruction of the Parthenon, and the, I believe this is housed in Tennessee, that um, you can go and visit. But this, um, you can see, if you look at the capitals of the columns, no scrolly scrolls and no acanthus leaves. So it has to be Doric. Also, we've got these things, the triglyphs, 
and the metal piece, triglyph metal piece, alternating across. So we can tell that this is a Doric temple. All right. So again, this is a colonnade running around the whole thing. Just above the colonnade is the architrave. And including the architrave and the triglyphs and the metal piece, that's called the entablature. So the entablature is the triglyphs and the metal piece and the architrave. And the pediment is that triangle up top. All right. So here we got those uh, demonstration of triglyphs and metal piece and another demonstration metal piece triglyphs. Okay. These are terms you need to know because they're going to help you identify orders of buildings. All right. Now we can see here that on the um, Parthenon, they would have also had friezes on the interior. Okay. So a frieze is a running bas relief sculpture. And you can tell that they're done in the in the classical style. Just looking at this example, they're done in the classical style. They're done with idealized forms that are very, very naturalistic. Think of the horses running um, back in the standard of Ur or um, the Narmer palette or any Egyptian artwork. Like this is incredible, the level of realism. Okay, so just just beautiful, beautiful works. All right, I'm going to scooch myself up and out of the way here. So the Acropolis we talked about. Now what we're going to do is if your last name falls from A to E, what you're going to do is go down into the presentation that's just below this video. And you're going to click on one of these, see how it's turning, the cursor's turning into a hand. I want you to click on the Parthenon, all right? That's gonna jump you to videos and readings about the Parthenon. And I want you to take notes on those videos and readings. And then what you're gonna do is create a flip grid and talk to the class about the Parthenon. If your last name falls F to J, you're gonna come over here to Dionysus, Helios, and the horses. Click here instead. Same thing. If your last name falls K through O, you're going to go Athena Nike, the temple. If you're P through T, you're going to click on uh, Nike adjusting her sandal. And if your last name falls U through Z, you're going to click on the plaque of the Ergastines. Okay. So you're going to, it'll jump you here. There's a video to watch. Photographs of me with the plaque of the Augustines and some notes to take. Okay. When we're all done and on the next page, I'm going to want you to compare and contrast, please, like we did before, the Parthenon to um, the Doriferos. I want you to be able to tell me how are they both expressions of the ideal, ideal beauty? How are they both expressions of Phi? So today, then what you're going to be doing is clicking back down below, finding your piece that you're going to be talking about, that you're going to be learning about. You're going to create, so you go in there, read, watch the videos. You're going to create a flip grid telling the class about this. This will be on your grade, so please do it. And then compare and contrast the Parthenon with the Doriferos. Okay. And this is what happens at the end. This is how Athens falls. Okay. So that's today. That's today's assignment. And that's what I'm going to be looking for today. So if you've got any questions, shoot me an email and that's it. Oh, there we go. Here's this bonus recreation of the Athena Parthenos.
The name phi, the, we use the Greek letter phi um, to represent beauty, the, to represent the ratio of 1 to 1.618. And we do that because of the sculptor Phidias, whose for the first letter of his name is phi. And we do that because Phidias was the sculptor who created this, who's credited with creating the sculptures on the Parthenon. Okay. He, he sculpts uh, the Athena Parthenos. He sculpts the um, pediment statues and the Metopes and such. He's credited with that. So there it is. Okay. If you've got any questions, shoot me an email. And next time we're talking Hellenistic Greece.